blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah. Benzene 
Idahosa. He came, he saw, and he conquered. You are the head and not the tail. You are blessed and not cursed. And guess what? I began to teach my people to cancel the curse out of their head. Because Galatians 3 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. There's no Christian that's under the bondage of the enslavement. That the devil tried to put you in. May I prosper. Be in hell. Even as my soul. Prosper. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't only prosper in soul. Prosper in spirit. Prosper in job. Prosper at home. Prosper in business. Prosper in town. Prosper everywhere. Prosper in the name of Jesus. Prosper. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be the head and not the tail. The Bible says you shall be a lender and not a borrower. The Bible says you shall be blessed when you go out. I say you shall be blessed when you come in. You shall be blessed when you lie down. You shall be blessed when you rise up. Say I'm blessed. Somebody shout hallelujah. That I've come to know now can make all things possible. Then I read Luke chapter 1, verse 45. There shall be a performance of those things which the Lord has said to her. There shall be a performance. To your dreams, to your expectation, God says, if you believe it, there's going to be a performance. And I, I ask myself, whom, with whom is all things possible? With whom is all things possible? Yeah. Who will perform my dreams? Please don't be afraid. Say it loud. Yeah. Who will bring to pass my heart desires? Yeah. Who will give me grace to realize my dreams? Yeah. God. You know, as a young preacher, you may not believe this. When I was young, people said to me, Do you need money? I said, Yes. They said, I'm going to send it to you, particularly here in America. I'll give them my father's address, my mother's address, everything. Even where my father was buried, I give them the address. And I will wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Some of them that I have their phone number, I will call, call. I just want to remind you what you promised me. I'm just reminding you, you said you are going to help me. Until one day God said to me, they didn't call you, I called you. Don't put my workload on people. Put it on me. And don't make it hard for yourself because my yoke is easy. My burden is light. I know last night when you heard somebody say she was going to give us 10 million, you say, oh, he has got it. When I was young, I wouldn't sleep because of that 10 million. But I'm glad to tell you she didn't give me 10 million. Did you hear what I'm saying? I am glad to tell you she didn't give me 10 million. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm very happy to tell you that. Why well, am I happy? Because what man cannot do, God will do it. Yeah. What she had done last night is to tell me that somewhere, somehow, one day, God is going to use somebody to give me 10 million for the gospel. 
Did you hear what I'm saying? So don't go from here and say, I was there when he, when she, he was given 10 million last night. I didn't get one dime. But God is going to give me money. And sometimes it's going to be more than 10 million. And if you believe it, it will happen to you too. Did you hear what I'm saying? Oh yes. So I read, there shall be a performance. And I said, thank God. The word of God said there shall be a performance. Now one day I came across a scripture in Genesis. He said, and Joseph was put in prison. And the Lord made him prosper in the prison. I said, what business was he doing there? None. How many of you know Joseph wasn't having trading and buying and selling in prison? But God made him prosper. If God can make a man in prison to prosper, what of me at home? Amen. It's my turn. Say it's my turn. My turn. Say I'm next. I'm next. Say I'm next. I'm next. Say I'm the next. I'm the next. Joseph prospered in the prison. I hear a man at home suffering. I'm not in trouble. Joseph was in trouble. He prospered. I'm not chained. Joseph was chained. He prospered. I wasn't betrayed. I'm not jailed. Joseph was jailed and he prospered. And I said, God, if you did it for Joseph, I'm next. I'm next without prison. I'm next without jail. But you are going to do me good. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Then I read that. That was the fourth scripture. Then I read the fifth one. All things are possible to him that believe it. All things, say that. Are possible possible to him that believe it. And I said, what? I'm a believer. Why am I not doing all things? Why is it that only a few things... Why am I doing few things when all things are possible to him that believe it? How many of you are believers? You've got the license to start to prosper. Did you hear me? Tonight, God is going to give you the license to start to prosper. Because the righteous shall flourish. I said the righteous shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish. Don't deny it. The church is suffering less than expected. Much more than expected. The church is suffering. The Christians are suffering more than sinners. Almost all the bank in the nation belong to sinners. Almost the best hotels belong to those who don't go to church. Marriott, you know who owns it. You know the owners of Marriott. Mormon. They own Marriott. They make millions a day. Millions a day. Billions a year. I have not seen one hotel yet where the proprietors speak in tongue. If there are, maybe very few. And if there are, it's going to be very small. Because Christians don't believe in big things. They serve a big God and do small things. And that's an insult to God. Because the devil is not as good as God. As a matter of fact, there's nothing good in the devil. And there's nothing bad in God. And with God, all things are possible. And all things are possible to him that believe it. I read that. I said, I said me. I, am, I can become a possibilitarian. Can stop failing and start succeeding if I can change the gear of my faith vehicle, if I can stop driving backward and start to drive forward, if I can accelerate in the front, if my own gear can move to the gear of the speed of faith of believing, if I can stop talking downward and start talking upward. If I can start to say the good thing and not the bad things anymore. If I can stop singing poor songs and begin to sing faith songs. 
If I begin to call myself a child of the living God, instead of a child of failure, of disappointment, if I begin to look unto God, instead of looking to my country, because the, gov the Bible did not say, the government shall supply all your needs. The Bible said, my God, my own God, the one I serve, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And when I read that place, according to his riches in glory, I knew that there's no poverty in glory. Somebody say hallelujah if you love God. I know some of you love caricature message, but I don't have one. You're looking for messages that say, hold on, the Lord will soon come. <laughs> Be patient with your suffering. When Jesus comes, you are no more going to suffer. It's a lie of the devil from hell. Amen. Jesus became poor that we through his poverty may become rich. Amen. Jesus died that your suffering might stop. Amen. Jesus became the one that paid price for my sickness and disease and sin. And many times we have accepted the God that forgives sin. We, forget, we forget and we refuse to accept the God that blessed people. And when we see somebody prosperous in Christianity, you begin to think, is he still a Christian? As if the symbol of righteousness is iniquity and setback. The sign of holiness is not poverty. As a matter of fact, poverty is a disgrace to God. Because God's word said in 3 John 2, I wish above all things that thou, say me, may prosper, be in health, even as my soul, Prospered. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't only prosper in soul. Prosper in spirit. Prosper in job. Prosper at home. Prosper in business. Prosper in town. Prosper everywhere. Prosper in the name of Jesus. Prosper. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be the head and not the tail. The Bible says you shall be a lender and not a borrower. The Bible says you shall be blessed when you go out. I said you shall be blessed when you come in. Yeah. You shall be blessed when you lie down. Yeah. You shall be blessed when you rise up. Yeah. Say I'm blessed. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Take the curse out of your head. Remove the curse from your head. Stop only liking bad things. What a shame when Christians hear their sales in, in, in Kmart. They are the first to be there. Sales, JC Penny, they are the first to be there. Sales in any more Christians are the first to be there. Why? They don't believe they, they deserve good things. They are only qualified. They are poverty oriented. They have been taught the poorer they are, the nearer they are to God. Whereas poverty is a disgrace to God. How can your heavenly father have everything and you have nothing? How can your God be Alpha and Omega and you are nothing? How can your God say, the silver am I, the gold am I, the thousand cattle on the hilltop and the hill where the cattle is standing belong to my God. Yeah. And you have nothing on earth. It's a trick of the devil for you to think. The poorer you are, the holier you become. That's not true. I say that's not true. <laughs> Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Just eat the word. When I preach it, you swallow it. When I preach it, you swallow it. Yeah. If you love the Lord, wave your hand. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So I read this scripture, and then one day I read the book of Revelation. Behold, I set before thee an open door. And he said, no man can shut it. So I said to myself, what can I do if I know I wouldn't fail? What could you do if you know you couldn't fail? What could you do if you know you couldn't fail? How many miles can you go if you know there's money to, to go there? How many houses can you build if you know God will provide you the money? I began to ask myself, Idahosa, what could you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And God said, All things. Somebody say, All things. All things. So when preachers come to me in Africa and say, Bro, things are very down. Um, there's no money here. I say, 
I wish your God and my God were the same. Because if the God that I serve is the one you serve, with my own God, all things are possible. If the God that I know is the one you know, you are the head and not the tail. You are blessed and not cursed. And guess what? I began to teach my people to cancel the curse out of their head. Because Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. There's no Christian that's under the bondage of the enslavement that the devil tried to put you in. If you believe that silver belongs to God, God doesn't use silver. If you believe that gold belongs to God, God doesn't use gold. If you believe that a thousand cattle on the hilltop below Heavenly Father, God does not eat beef. So who does he have all these things for? Say me. me. Somebody say me. me. Say I. I. We have been so talked out of blessing. And the only good song we know how to sing is suffering song. We have been so oriented by sinners to believe that we have no right to have access to our father's treasure. And Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And many of you have key, but you don't know where the door is. So you are living in hunger and starvation and nakedness. And you hearing me here in Nigeria. And you hearing me anywhere. You are hearing me in Africa now. Or in England. Your suffering would have been gone long ago. If you believe what I am saying tonight. That your heavenly father owns everything. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The money in this bank, in this world. Come from your heavenly father. Government is not the owner of everything. God is the owner of everything. So what did I do? The first thing I did was to take my name out of the list of those who are cursed. Amen. Somebody didn't hear me. I removed my name from the list of those who were cursed. I took my name out of the list of those who are not prospering. And the Bible said, be it unto you according to your faith. So I said to myself, from now, my faith is that I'm good. Say, I'm good. I'm, good. I'm, on, top. I'm on top. I'm not at the bottom. I'm, not at the bottom. I'm, the, head. I'm the head. Not the tail. I'm, the I'm in the front. I'm the not at the back. The I am blessed. I'm, I'm not cursed. I'm the Lord is my shepherd. Is my shepherd. That's, all That's all I need. Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. I who was the president of Poverty Associates. I removed my name. I, who was the chairman of Have Nothing Incorporated. I removed my name. I, who was the chief of all sinners. I took my name away. And I said, God, whatever faith it takes to be well, I'm going to be well. Amen. Whatever faith it takes to bless the poor, I am not going to be the poor. I'm going to be the one blessing the poor. Yeah. 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 Then I heard. Then I heard. That the righteous shall flourish. Yeah. So I said God. I am tired of having little things. I want to flourish. Amen. And the Lord said. If you hold me. And I hold you. You will flourish. Amen. So for 32 years now. I grabbed God's trousers. And for the last 17 years, I refused to let him go. And I began to believe that my God is not as small as the government. Amen. 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 My God is not as small as the biggest bank in the world. Amen. With bank, many things cannot be done. But with my God, all things are possible. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. And I began to learn lessons. On how to live righteous life. On how to make Christ the strength of my life. And I began to learn the lesson that Paul learned. When Paul said, it is no longer I that live it. But Christ that live it in me. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I began to take God to my street people. 
I began to take this God I'm talking to you about tonight to the blind and they began to see. Amen. To the lame and they began to walk. Amen. To the deaf and they began to hear. Amen. To the weak and they became strong. Amen. To the downtrodden and God began to lift them up. Yes. Then the day I read, the Lord is the lifter of my head. Yes. He's the lifter of my head. Yes. God is the lifter of my head. Yes. I said, God is the lifter of my head. Yes. I began to sing a new song. I began to tell myself the things that are impossible with men is possible with God. Yeah. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Yeah. I began to think right. Yes. I began to wish myself good. No matter what you wish me, I wish myself good. Yeah. No matter how you look at me, I look at myself as beautiful. Then yeah. I began to find in the Bible how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Yeah. So I began to wear good shoes instead of bad shoes. I began to read in the Bible. You shall worship God in the beauty of his holiness. So I began to pull off my old poor garment. And began to worship God in the beauty of his holiness. I said this is too beautiful to be ugly. Because God did a perfect work in her life. And this man is too handsome to look ugly. You say you are from Africa. Africa is where the ark went to. That's why we are called ark Africa. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. The ark of promise is now in Africa. Ark Africa. Right. So nobody from Africa should miss the ark of promise. So I began to tell myself. I'm going to be the head and not the tail. Yeah. Then one night, Pastor Milton. God says, son, do you know why you have small things? I said, no. He said, because you don't believe in big things. I said, I do. He said, no, show me one big thing you've done. I look around my whole life, not one. <laughs> then I read this scripture I want to read to you tonight. Are you ready for it? Amen. Ephesians 3. Lo grosso ye hebra matas lo grosso yo do. Le moro boha parasa ye hekele. Bando mo hi prosso yo do do. Ephesians 3. Has yeah. any pastor blessed already? Yeah. Is anybody ready to set new goal yet? Yeah. Say ah. ah. Is any believer ready to start a new life yet? Yeah. Say ah. ah. Uh. And I read this one. Ephesians 3.17 That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and width and height. Verse 19 And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled, that ye might be filled, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Pastor Wittenberg, we serve a full God. I'm a child. Of the God of fullness. Full in health. Full in joy. Full in prosperity. Full in abundance. Full of miracles. Full of surprises. Full of upwardness. Full in whatever I lay my hand to do. That God may fill your heart with the fullness of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So I took my name out of the list of those who have nothing. First of all, you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. the first time 17 years ago for the first time 17 years ago for the first time I read that the Bible said that Christ may dwell in my heart not poverty to dwell in my heart where there's no Christ there are crises but where there is Christ there's no crisis that Christ may dwell in my own heart. So I said, all the poverty I've been thinking, where has it come from? Not from God. God never tell you you are going to be sick. God never tell you you are going to be down. God never tell you you are going to be weak. God never tells you that. God, the Bible says, every good and perfect gift come from God. Somebody said, the Father of light. Father of light. Amen. Every good, brother Melton, and perfect gift. Yes. If it's good and it's perfect, it's a gift. Yes. Uh, amen. You didn't hear me. Amen. Many times I ask myself, why do American preachers always put <laughs> in their tapes? Don't copy it. Because they are afraid when you know it, they will not have any more. If your anointing is big, you will not be afraid of somebody touching you. Amen. It's because the one you have is so small, you think when I touch you, I'm going to take all. That's why you come from the back of the stage. Before they know where you are, you've already sneaked out. <laughs> and here we have not a high priest that cannot be touched. Oh, our high priest can be touched. Say hallelujah. I say our high priest can be touched. Yeah. And I'm glad that God is touching you today. Wherever you are now, God is touching you right now. Yes. He's touching you to meet your need, to make you stronger. Yes. That Christ may dwell in your heart. Say, Jesus is dwelling in me. Jesus is dwelling in me. The Bible says that Christ may dwell in your heart. How many of you know that Christ is dwelling in your heart? Amen. Keep your hand up. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you know that Jesus in your heart is not poor? Amen. How many of you know that the Christ in your heart is not down? Amen. How many of you know that the Christ in you is not sick? How many of you know that the Christ in you is well? Amen. How many of you know that the Jesus in you have life and life more abundantly? Yes. Wave your hands and say, Aye! Oh. If the God I'm talking about is the one that you know, Jesus dwells in me. Where is the room for poverty? God cannot share his throne with two kings. And your heart is not big enough to occupy devil and Christ. Hallelujah! Your heart 
is not big enough to contain God and contain the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You didn't hear me. Hallelujah. Your heart is not large enough, Sister Georgia, to carry Jesus and carry poverty. And the first thing Jesus does when he enters a man's heart is to sweep it clean. Yes. Amen. Say, I'm clean by his blood. Say, I'm made whole by his blood. Say, I'm a new creation by his blood. Say, hallelujah. Then I found that the Bible says, Christ can dwell in me by faith. So I say from today, poverty, get out of my heart. Even the thought and idea of faith. The thought of it. Then the Lord told me, I'm going to teach you how to talk. So every time I want to say a doubtful thing, say, push it back. That's not from me. When I want to say, I don't know what. To... I have no. I'm not. What? Everybody say, get up. I don't know what that but <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah I began to learn to speak surely say surely Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Shout hallelujah. How many days of your life? How many days of your life? How many days of the month? All of them. How many days of the week? All of them. Everybody say all. All the, days. All, the days. All the days of my life. Of my life. Uh -huh. Give God a hand if you believe the Bible. So I said, God, I hear you. Say, God, I hear you. But I said, How can I do it? You've told me not to worry about prosperity. You told me that if I plant my seed, I will reap harvest. You told me if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things shall be added. I became a child of addition. I'm no more a child of subtraction. Don't worry, 3D, don't worry. I began to say, a woman like this have no right to be poor. Too beautiful to be poor. I began to say, a young man as handsome as this have no right to be at the back. His head is too bright to be, to be down. I began to teach my children, you are the head and not the tail. You are first in the class. And my children are all straight A students. Where would they get the poor brain from? I'm smart, their mother is smart, and God is smart. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. My son won who is who among who is who in American high school. My daughter has just won who is who among who is who in American high school. All my children are who is who among who is who. <laughs> Give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. My first boy and my first girl, they won the award of who is who among who is who. So their father must be who is who. <laughs> children 
of who is who among who is who. Oh, my God. But I said, God, how do I do the impossible? And listen to what God told me. Verse 20. Ephesians 3, 20. Now. Say now. now. I didn't believe that prosperity can have a beginning. I didn't know. I thought it was just for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or perhaps for the old man, Hagin, or all the Canaanites. No. He said, now. Say now. now. Unto, him Unto him that is able to do. Huh? Say now. 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 Him, him that is able to do, able to do. Exceeding, exceeding abundantly, abundantly. Above. above all, all. 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 that we ask or think. think. So God told me the solution is. In your asking or thinking. Amen. Hold your ears. Say, I hear, you. I hear you. And you on TV say, I hear you. I hear you. And you say it on their behalf. I hear, you. I hear you. Hold your ears. Say, I hear you. I hear you. Hold your right ear. Say, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. God is able to do. Yes. I thought it was me. I didn't know it was God. Not by might. Amen. Not by power. Yes. But by my spirit. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes. Unto him. So I said God what do you mean? He said give it unto me. That is able to do. So that's not my father in this world. It's my father in heaven. Unto him, Amen. brother. Yes. You have no right to be poor. I know that. Amen. Amen. Brother, you have no right to be poor. Amen. Amen. My sister, you have no right to be poor. Amen. God is able to do. Amen. So the Lord said to me, say, set goal and let me do it. Set goals and let me do it. Dream big dreams. Hori Amahaka. Dream big dreams. Somebody asked me two days ago in Tampa. A few days ago. He said, Papa, I said, yes. He said, how do you prosper with one dollar? I said, one dollar in a small hand, passed to a big hand, with a big mouth of faith, in a big God of blessings. Hallelujah. Take it to Jesus. I said, take it to Jesus. If you want abundant life, Remove your name from the list of poor people. Right. And, I, and I see, I see many, many people come from America to Africa to look for pictures of children with flies in their mouth. That is not Africa, that is TV Africa. That's American begging pictures Africa. If you want to know how Africa looks like, this is one. Kwashoko children, and, and most of you are foolish to, to think that that is Africa. Now a man shows you program on Monday, the same baby will fly in the mouth. Friday, the same baby will fly in the mouth. And he said, give me money to give. If he was sending the money to the baby, don't you think it's time for the flies to get out of the mouth?
Somebody say amen. amen. When I come to America or go to England, I don't take the picture of the bad thing I see. I take the picture of the good things I see. Everything I hear in America that is wrong, when I enter the first class seat in the aircraft in New York, when the flight take off, I say I leave all the bad things behind. Amen. I don't take them to Africa. But when I'm American preacher, I go to Africa, they look for naked children, they look for lizards, they look for snakes. Instead of looking for souls, they are looking for snakes. Instead of looking for good people, they are looking for children who have no dress on. To say, send me money. Then you send them $200, they give the baby 18 cents. And on the day of judgment, they are going to pay for it. Because they lie in the name of those children. They lie. Most of those children they are taking the offering for, the children die before they get here. And you send them money anyway. And they put it in their headquarters. They leave the pulpit and begin to sit down to show you pictures of children with diarrhea, with pneumonia, with kwashoko, with blind eyes. And I just pray that God will not judge America like that. Don't only go to nations and look for bad things. Get the good of the land. Somebody say hallelujah. So God began to teach me. He said bless your people. Tell them they are blessed. So when you shake my hand in the morning. I'm blessed. Amen. I'm blessed. In the evening. I'm blessed. In the night. I'm blessed. Amen. Wherever I go, say it, I am. shall flourish yeah. the righteous shall flourish yeah. I it. your skin have nothing to do with your prosperity Amen. your city have nothing to do with your prosperity yeah. where God is there's life yeah. say there's life yeah. so God told me I am able to do exceeding and abundantly yeah. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, 
click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Say above. above. I didn't hear you. Above. Say above all. Above all. We can ask. We can ask. Or think. Or think. You know why you have never done anything big in life? You think you are the one going to do it. So when you want to buy a car, you look for a car according to your income. And when you need small money, you pray. But when you need big money, you go to the bank. <laughs> That's how you people do it in civilized nation. Where you need ten dollars, I believe in the name of Jesus. I have it now. I claim it. I'm sure. I got it. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you need one thousand, city bank. <laughs> Why? You talk big and act small. You serve a big God and live a small life. Why? You don't believe. You can jump and shout and rumble. Your jumping does not tell me your testimony. That's right. Paul says, show me your faith by your works. Right. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? You say, thank God, I'm poor. Thank God, I have no car. Thank God, shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. The righteous shall flourish. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, the reason I'm poor is because I'm very holy. It's a sign of iniquity. Because when you are a sinner, you are cursed when you lie down. You are cursed when you rise up. You are cursed when you go out. You are cursed when you come in. And the Bible says in the book of Hosea, you earn salary and put it in the leaking pocket. If you were righteous, you will flourish. Yes. Say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. <laughs> Say, I have right. I'm right. I have right. I'm right. To flourish. flourish. I'm a righteous man. Righteous man. I, can I can flourish. That is the scripture that changed my life. Unto him that is able to do. I didn't know I was not the doer. I thought I was the one to do it. But God told me I'm able to do. Exceeding abundant exceeding abundantly above so how far can I ask God can do above it how much can I think God can do above it so I said eh, now I'm going to take limit of God I'm no more going to be a boy a black boy from Africa that poor man from Africa coming to ask us one dollar no my God is not poor my God is prosperous yeah. Yeah. I told God, I said, I'm going to be the symbol of prosperity. The Bible said that they may see you and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So here am I. Say hallelujah. God is able to do exceeding, exceeding, abundantly, above all you can ask. Or think. or think how much can you ask if you know you are not the one going to do it ask for more right. if you know you are not the one going to do it think more Amen. because God said no matter how you think I will beat you to it Hallelujah. so I changed my mind I said God I will never build any school that is small. I will never be on TV. That is small. I will never. I will never. I will never preach a message. That is small. Whether I'm talking to 200 people. Or 2,000 people. Or all the number of you here tonight. Or in the big church. Or in the crusade ground. To have a million people. Or one million people. 
God is a good God every day. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So I told myself, now I'm going to be doing all that God told me he can do with me. For with God, all things say possible. possible. Brother, I have a prophecy for you. Greer, your heart desire have almost crumbled. But God told me to tell you, the war that broke down shall be rebuilt again. Every fiber of your body and every area of your life that the caterpillar worm and can can worm have eaten. God will bring it back. For this expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. The Lord shall bring it to pass. Says the spirit of the living God. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because you have praised me. In the face of all obstacles. Because you have declared that I am a good God. From now shall I be the example of your proclamation. For my voice shall prove what you have testified. For you have told many that I am good unto you. For you have told many that I have blessed you. From now shall I not only bless you but make you a blessing. Because your mouth have confessed that the God you serve is a good God. So shall it be unto you, says the Spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, rise up. For the Lord shall say to you, your body is not made for sickness. Your heart shall not beat for fear. For the Lord thy God is a healing God. Take my yoke upon you, for it is easy. My body is light, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. From this day shall you experience my power, says the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Sister, the Lord has healed you. 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 Some hook up my mama, 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 is seeming blind. You can't see with that eye. That eye is going to open right now. I need a few ushers to help me quickly. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Where's the neck problem? Where's the neck problem? In the name of Jesus, he's healed. In Jesus' name, heal. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree the healing of God upon your neck. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi, my Kale, come here. Lift your hand up. Twist that neck. Check it. In the name of Jesus, it's healed. Now, brother, you are healed. In Jesus' name, you are healed. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. In Jesus' name, heal. In Jesus' name, heal. In Jesus' name, you are healed. Heal. In the name of Jesus, go. Go. Come on, go. 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 Epa, my Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Rokoma, release it in Jesus' name. Come on, go, let it go. In the mighty name of Jesus, turn that neck. It's healed now. In Jesus' name, go. Body be free, body be free, body be free. From every injury, from every attack of Satan, loose. In Jesus' name, loose. This message and a collection of other messages are available at Ewo Media Services. Ewo Media Services, inspirational, world-class production. Please plead with you, sincerely from the depth of my heart, please reject slavery. If any man tried to force you to think back, tell him, forgetting the things that are past, I press forward. Point your hand, say, I press forward. Vote for righteousness. Die back in light than to be promoted in darkness. Did you hear what I said? When you support light and they kill you, be happy you died for light than to have promotion in darkness. How many will say amen? 
hundreds of years our people were told back home be satisfied at where you are when God raised me said challenge that the man that asks you to be happy that you are a slave is a killer a man that tells you to be happy that he's going to give you loaf of bread does not believe in tomorrow and you must do I repeat do your utmost best to fight whatever will refer your mind backward one of the greatest lessons I have learned is that nothing that comes our way that we bring before God that will not have solution no problem is too big for God to solve and none is too small for him to pay attention God does not reward our good with evil when we do something good in his name when we do something good for him he doesn't say because thou hast so served me thou payest thy tithe thou givest thy offering therefore shalt thou be in trouble god is not like that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him somebody say amen Prophecy is more than laughing. Prophecy is more than falling down. Prophecy is more than rolling on the ground. Prophecy is, thus says the Lord. And one thing I've heard God say to me, to you, the yoke is off your shoulder. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. 
scroll down to see the preacher's pictures click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers videos can be shared on all social media platforms we need your help now Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, This is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then, many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, uh, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, 
why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Onitsha. And we went to put posters all over Onitsha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come, so uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79, my class started in 1980, and uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools, he started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex, he started Benson Hose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us, and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Daosa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm 
they were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to believe. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy sure Dausa. He was saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, he lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down five minutes time. The pilot said he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James. You don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name Chief Ebohu, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I, was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Cerullo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, 
that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sick. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, where can I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? 
But he said he can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen, this baby died at about nine. And it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl's name? I will send it to I said, It's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, convulsion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside the war room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben in the outside. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So Carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> and then they died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be that glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> With him 
to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power, super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graving images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed. And he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came. I said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, we prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small 
or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child 
and bring her back to life. The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in bruises belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as a black African 
he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa, who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is, in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. Where they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. It also operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. 
He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, the World of Faith Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world and I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord I am honored to be a part of his anointing a part of his of his ministry I want to ask you please make sure you share this videos this video this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, 
and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed You. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.